الله العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا ما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ثم صلاة وسلام وتحيه والإكرام على سيدنا ونبينا وطبيبه مطوسنا بالقاسم المصطفى محمد الله صل على محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين الهداة المهدين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطميرا بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الأعلى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا أتقوا الله وأتقوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم سلامات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد كير بدر زين سلسلة السلام عليك ورحمة الله وبركاته today we are gathered here on this Shabbat Shalom to celebrate the Wiladat of Imam Ibaqir alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam Ibaqir alayhi salatu wasalam, his kunniya was Abu Ja'far. Because in Arab, they call you with your elder son's name, like father of Ja'far. So Imam Ibaqir alayhi salatu wasalam, his name was Ibaqir. And his kunniya was Abu Ja'far. And when it comes to the name of Baqir, what does that mean? The person who split knowledge into different branches. That is the definition of Baqir. And he also had different titles like, for example, Hadi, the person who guide his ummah and his followers. And also, one of his titles are Shakir, which means always in all places of life, he is always thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So his name, his, his, his titles are according to uh, what we have uh, in history. Baqir, Hadi and Shakir. And his name was Muhammad on the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. I mean, in this Imam, this infallible Imam, Imam Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam, Muhammad ibn Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam, he is Alawi and Hashimi from both sides. From his father's side as well, from his mother's side both. His father was of course Ali ibn Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam. So he is from the progeny of Imam Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam from his father's side. And from his mother's side, he is son of Ali ibn Hussain. His mother is... Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Fatima bint al-Hassan The mother of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam is Fatima bint al-Hassan So from his father's side His grandfather is Imam al-Hussain alayhi salatu wasalam And from mother's side Grandfather is Imam al-Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad So we say he is Hashimi And Alawi from both sides He is our fifth Imam and seventh infallible, seventh ma'asum. If you put two digits together, 57. So this is the year of birth of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam. And especially he lived for a duration of 57 years according to the narration of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. And he was martyred in the year of 114, 114 year of Hijrah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. As all of us we know, Mumineen, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named them. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named them. His name was Muhammad. And his title, Baqir, it was given to him by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. That's why... One day, when Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was giving the interpretation of this verse of Qur'an Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu atiyu Allah wa atiyu rasul wa ulil amri minkum O believers, be obedient to Allah and Rasul and ulil amr So Jabir asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, who is ulil amr? We know Allah, itaat of Allah is clear for us Itaat of Rasulullah is clear for us But who are ulil amr? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his Prophet, he named 12 infallibles, Bara'im alayhi wa salatu wa salam. He named him Ali ibn Abi Talib, 
and then Hassan Hussein as in Laabidin alayhi salatu wasalam Muhammadun al-Baqir when he came to the name of Imam al-Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam he said O Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you long life that you will see my son Muhammadun al-Baqir when you meet him you have to deliver my salam to my son salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad so his title was given within this verse to him by Rasulullah himself. So Rasulullah said his name is Muhammad, his title is Baqir. And Rasulullah he says he's going to be a split knowledge into the different branches. So when we say his name is given by Prophet so this is the proof of the narration. So indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He gave him long life Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari He saw Imam Muhammad Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam one day And at that point he lost most of his eyesight So when he realized that this is Imam alayhi salatu wasalam in his childhood So he delivered the message of Rasulullah to him And Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari is a great narrator who narrated from Rasulullah, Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wasalam, all of them. But when he comes and he's, he knows the status of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, all the Imam Baqir was child. But even he learned, he narrated from Imam Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam and he became his student. And unfortunately in history after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam, some of the companions, salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi some of the companions of Rasulullah they declared to be his successor. Why? Because we are older than Ali ibn Abi Talib. So the criteria is not being old age. The criteria is education and ilm. So he realized. He knew. So he narrated a lot of ahadis, Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari from Imam Baqir alayhi salatu And inshallah we will discuss about the students of Imam Baqir and Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salatu Among them, the best name is about uh, the name of Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari. Salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. And even one day, Imam Baqir he asked Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari, O Jabir, let me know, I, I want to know you, the, the status of your Iman. Because uh, when you are, uh, when you see the, the, the life of many Masumin alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, you become overconfident sometimes. So Imam, he said, I want to know the status of your Iman. You saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Ali, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussain, Ibn Lali, my father. So why, well, how do you see this world? So Jabir ibn Abdullah al Ansari, old man, he said, I don't like this world anymore. Then he said, I prefer being old than being young. Imam said, why? Because he said, in old age, of course, you are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are always in submission. You have less sins. That's why my conclusion of my life and my experience is that old age is better because you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah. <laughs> then Imam asked, what is your other prophet preferences? So he said, Yabna Rasulillah, I like poverty than being wealthy. Why? Because if you have wealth, you become mutakabbir and arrogant. So you go again against the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, I like to be ill. Why? Because when mu'mineen, they are facing illnesses, they say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. Like for example, if you have tooth pain or any kind of pain which you have faced, the first words come from you, from your mouth is, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, cure me from my illnesses. So Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Ansari, he says, Yabna Rasulullah, I prefer to be ill, so when I am ill, I am going to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Lord. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah, Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So then Imam smiled and replied, this is the not highest status of Iman, O Jabir ibn Abdullah al -Ansari. Because you are saying you prefer to be old, you prefer to be ill. So this is your preference. Not rida upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's destiny. 
So you have to say, that in the reality, you have to say, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made me young, I am thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I have to be radi with the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and shouldn't make my preferences. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So I mean, he was Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam. Splitter of knowledge. Alladhi yabqaru al-ilma baqrat. He introduced different uh, aspects and uh, uh, points in ahadis, in his ahadis. So why he was named Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam? All of our ayma alayhi salatu wasalam, they are Baqir. They are splitter of knowledge. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. We have a lot of ahadis from Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. Every Imam of us, they have spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why only Imam Muhammad al Baqir? The reason why Allah gave him this title is his time. Because after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first reason is after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what happened? The companion of Rasulullah, they said, Hasbuna Allah. The book of Allah is enough for us. Then those who came as Khalifa of the time, they banned narrating the ahadith of Rasulullah. And this has been written in the books, our books. So this ban was there until the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the Amawi Khalifa. And it is very much strange when we read this narration, this history of Islam and the banning of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it makes us to be surprised because they have punished those who narrated a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the ashab of Rasulullah. Some of them, they have been exiled <coughs> to another place like for example Gabir ibn, uh, Abu Dhar al-Ghaffari. Or some of them, they have been present because of narrating a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because they said, Hasbuna kitabullah, the book of Allah is enough for us. Why we know the, the interpretation and explanation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the narration of Aima alayhi wa salatu wasalam and Prophet himself, salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi wa And even they burn the narrations of Rasulullah, our Prophet. A lot of them, they will burn. But Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the Khalifa of Bani Umayyah, when he came to the Khilafah, he removed that ban. That time was the time of Imam Muhammad Bakr and he got time to spread the ahadith of Rasulullah for 19 years, 19 years, not 1, 2, 3 years. And the other thing which happened at the time of Imam Bakr Bani Umayyah and Bani Abbas, both of them were in fight with each other on the Khilafah. That's why Imam Bakr and even Imam Jafar Sadiq both of them they got plenty of time and they had lessons and rules for Ashab. That's why the second reason why Imam Bakr got time. So because he spread much, that's why he was named Bakr, the splitter of knowledge. And according to the narrations and uh, Shaykh Tusi, he writes in a Rajal, his Rajal, Rajal Shaykh Tusi. What is the book of Rajal? Kitab Rajal. The narrators, uh, we see their biography, if they are authentic or not. So the narrators who narrated the hadith of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, Shaykh Tusi, he brought approximately 466 names from Ashab of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, who narrated a hadith, who narrated a hadith. And among them were Muhammad ibn Muslim, those who were followers of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, you could say them Shia as well. Muhammad ibn Muslim. He narrated 30,000 narrations from Imam Bakr Now this is Lamha Fikriya for us. When we are related, associated with the Maktab of Ahl Bayt how many narrations we know by heart? Or how many narrations we have from our Aima for our own self? But this person, Muhammad ibn Muslim, he narrated 
Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, 30,000. Let me bring you another name. The another name is Jabir bin Yazid Jufi. He narrated not 1 to 1,000, 2,000 ahadith. He narrated 70,000 ahadith from Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. 70,000 ahadith. Likewise, Zurara bin Ayyun. He narrated from Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, he narrated from Imam Jafar Saleh alayhi salatu wasalam. And according to some narrations and uh, uh, teaching of ulama, they say the best sahabi among the ashab of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam was Zurara ibn Ayyan. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> Likewise, we can name Abu Basir, Fulayl bin Yasar, Burayl bin Muawiyah, Ijli, Aban bin Talib. Abu Hamza Thumali, who narrated hadith from Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wasalam. In month of Ramadan, we recite Dua Abu Hamza Thumali. Umran bin Ayyan, they are the one who narrated a hadith. Most of these ahadiths are interpretation of Quran. And they are related to Ilmul Kalam. Especially at the time of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, there were many much divisions between Muslim Ummah. That's why. Imam alayhi salatu wasalam spoke about aqaid and tafsir quran and jeet. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, I mean, at his time, many people, they ask questions. And inshallah, we will uh, discuss about some of the narrations for our barakah, inshallah. But as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam, he had companions who came and asked questions. Some of those questions, those who asked, they wanted to examine the knowledge of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. Among them was one day, Taus Yamani, he came to Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam. He asked certain questions. Imam said, when he asked for permission, Imam said, okay, you can ask the question. So he said, could you advise when one third of humanity were died, one third of the humanity, Imam Abu Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam he replied, "You should say not one third, one fourth." When Qabil killed the Hazrat Habil alayhi salatu wasalam, because at that point there were four people on earth: Hazrat Adam, Hawa, and Habil and Qabil. So when he killed Qabil kill Habil, so one third of the humanity is dead. That's why according to Quran, and this is this is the teaching of Ahl Bayt alayhim salatu wasalam. Man qatala nafsan muta'amidan fajajahu jaha jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, those who kill one person, their jaza and saza is what? Jahannam. Khalidan fiha. Or if you kill one person, you have killed whole humanity. So the killing, that's why it is one of the major sins. Gunahane Kabira mentioned. In the narrations of Ayyam alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi wa salam. Then Tawus al Yamani he asked another question. That which fast is that in which eating and drinking is permissible? So Imam alayhi salatu wa salam he replied by saying, The fast of Hazrat Maryam salam alayhi And this questioning is good if you are allowed to eat eat and drink in fast in month of Ramadan, especially within the United Kingdom. So, of course, this was not related to Ramadan. So, Imam replied, this kind of fast was related to Hazrat Maryam Salam When she was coming with his son, Hazrat Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, who got birth without father. So, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked her to have a fast of not speaking. So, that's why she was able to eat and drink but she was not allowed to speak. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And even, it is better for us, according to the narration of Ayyma alayhi salatu wa salam, fasting, uh, such type of fast, there is no, uh, uh, no type, uh, such type of fast in the religion of Islam. You can speak, but speaking less is always recommended in the religion of Islam. That's why Ayyma alayhi salatu wasalam, if you want to, uh, if you read the narrations of Ayyma, always there is a way and place to interpret the narrations of each Imam. So you, they have given a lot of meaning in some words. So that's why there are people 
like for example, I have seen Maraj and ulama in whom just they speak for uh, about one narration of Imam for like for example two three hours. Why? Because uh, there are a lot of meanings hidden within the narration of Imam and they have learned from Quran Majid, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala Himself, as I have mentioned, that there are seven to seventy button of each verse of Quran. There is Zahir of Quran and there is Batim of Quran as well. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Then he asked Tao Siyamani, what is that thing which always decreases, not increase? Imam replied, this is your age, your Umar. And according to the narration, Nafasul Mar'e Khuta'u Ila Ajale. Every breath of you is Qadam. Nafasul Mar'e Khuta'u Ila Ajale. Is Qadam step towards our death. And then he asked Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, which thing is that which always increases, not decreases? Then Imam says, water of the sea, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it to increase always, not to decrease. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Who are those, the other person of him, who are those who, are, who, who, who spoke truths? But declare liars. Within the Quran, we have one surah known to be Surah Munafiqun. Munafiqin, they said, Ya Rasulullah, you are a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they declare liars. Why? Because they di didn't accept the Prophet of Rasulullah by their hearts. Salah ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And then he asked, Yabna Rasulullah, what is that thing which flew only once? He said, Kohetur, which was brought upon Bani Israel because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted them to have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So most of this question you can imagine, they ask Imam alayhi salatu wasalam to know the knowledge of Likewise, according to the narrations, Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, he was traveling towards Sham or coming back from Sham. And especially, Aima alayhi salatu wasalam, and even our ulama, you could identify them by their spirituality. So what happened when he was coming back or going towards Sham, he saw there are people who are together. Imam alayhi salatu wasalam asked, what is the reason of your ishtima? So a person said, these people are Christians and their scholar comes once in a year to answer their questions. So this scholar, of course, <laughs> once in a year, <laughs> he comes to give answers to your questions. Even nowadays, if you ask an alim any question on WhatsApp, if he doesn't reply you straight away, you blame him. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. <laughs> So he used to come once in a year to give answer to the questions of his followers. Now Ayatullah Sistani and Maraji, you write the question, they answer you within 10-15 days. This is Baraka for you. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. We have to be rally for that. So Imam alayhi salatu salam, he went in the congregation and he sat in a way like others were sitting. Then Alim of Christianity, when he came out, he saw his congregation who are there, you know, eye contact. When he saw Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, he realized this is a different person. This is the different person. So he asked him, are you Muslim? Are you Christian? So Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, no, I am Muslim, I am not Christian. So he asked second question from Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, are you from ulama of Muslims? So Imam replied by saying, he didn't say, I am alim. He said, I am not ignorant. I am not jahil. So this is the humbleness of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, which teach our ulama and ourselves that if you have knowledge, knowledge of Islam, knowledge of anything, you shouldn't be proud of your knowledge. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Then Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he said to Imam, is it possible for me to ask you a question? Imam said, yes, of course. But we are here to listen to you. He said, no, I want to ask some, you some question because you are Muslim. And you are saying that you are not Jahil. 
So let me have some question for you. So he said, how it is possible, Muslims, they say, in Jannah, of course, we are going to have blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever you want to eat. Ma tashtahil and fus, You will eat whatever you want in Jannah. Everything is there. But according to the narration, when we are eating and we are drinking, of course, in 24 hours, we have to go bed khala bathroom. But you will have no such need in Jannah. How it is possible? Is there any example on earth? So this is the question, of course. So Imam Alayhi Salatu Salami replied, of course, the baby in the womb of mother. The baby gets ghida from mother, but there is no urine or stool in the womb of mother. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Then he said, how it is possible? You say you will eat and drink as much as you want in the Jannah, but that food is not going to be finished. If you eat apple, that's not going to finish. If you eat anything, that's not, not going to be finished on the Day of Judgment in Jannah. How it is possible? And according to two different narrations, Imam Ali Salatusam gave example on earth when there is a alim who is spreading the knowledge of Islam. When he is spreading knowledge of Islam, there is no decrease in his knowledge. So likewise, in Jannah, people will eat and ni'mat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are going to be there as they were. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. Allah, Allah. Allah. The other example which Imam alayhi salatu salam gave, the example of candle. From the light of one candle, you can lighten many candles without any kind of the deduction from the nur of first candle. So this is the example on earth. Sallallahu alayhi wa wa alayhi Muhammad. Then he asked another question. Which is the time which is not in the day, neither in night? So Imam alayhi salatu salam replied by saying this is the time from down to Tulu al-Fatih. From Salat al-Fatih, the time of Tulu al-Fatih, Fajr al-Sadr, until the time of sunrise. This is the time it is not counted in day or night. So that's why Imam Ali Salatu Salam he says this is the peaceful time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts for your dua. And if there is a marid, he feel release, relief at this time, and this is the baraka, very best time within 24 hours. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah. Allah. The final question which he asked Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, who were those two people who got births on same day, same year, same time, and died same day, same time, same year, but one of, was, one of them was 50 years old and another was 150 years. Is it possible? So Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he replied by saying, those two people were brothers, Hazrat Aziz and Uzair, Nabi Prophet Muhammad, uh, 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 Nabi Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam, and his brother. And both of them, Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about them in the Quran and Majid as well. Inshallah, we will discuss the words. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah. 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 So both of them, they got birth on the same day. Nabi Uzair and his brother Aziz. They lived for 25 years together. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Quran Majid, He was passing from a karya, from a village. He saw everyone is dead, and there are dead bodies and bones spread everywhere. So Uzair Nabiullah, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how it is possible, how it is possible that Allah, how is it possible that Allah is going to resurrect all of them, give life to this dead body. When he had such thought in his mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him to be dead for 100 years. So when he was dead, he was 25 years old. Hundred years he was dead, and then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala resurrected him. He became alive after hundred years. Then Allah asked him, how many, for how much, for how, how long? 
you were dead. Kala tam lavista. Kala lavisto yoman o bahavayam. This is interesting word. He said, I was sleeping, I was not alive for one day or less than one day. Yoman o bahavayam. That means after deaths, the time passes and you don't know how it passes. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him knowledge. Kala bal lavista me ata'am. You were dead for one year. Fantur ila ta'amika wa sharabika lam yatasanna. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching him how he is going to resurrect those people who are dead on the day of judgment. He is giving example. Fantur ila ta'amika wa sharabika lam yatasanna. See your food and drink. They are like they were. At the time of your death, still fresh. Lam yatasanna. Vandur ila hemarik. Now see towards your donkey. Donkey was vasila of you know transportation at that point. Vandur ila hemarika. When he saw his donkey, he was dead. Donkey was dead, and of course his bones were there. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made his donkey to be alive and put flesh upon his bones. And he said, Oh, Uzair, likewise we are going to resurrect people on the day of judgment. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And then at that point, Hazrat Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Inna Allah ala kulli shayatir. Allah is capable to do everything. So when he came, he was 25 years old when he saw this karya. And he was dead for 100 years. But when he became alive, he is still 25 years old. 25 years old. Young man, he came back to his home. He saw his brother Aziz. He was 125 years old. 125 years old. They were not capable to recognize Hazrat Uzair alayhi salatu wasalam. So when he introduced himself, they got know each other. Then both brothers lived for further 25 years. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made both of them to die on one day. In this way, one was age 50 and another brother was age 150. Oh. Then Christian, he said, you brought this alim from Muslimin to insult me. And then he asked Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, you said you are not jahil, you are alim. So why didn't you say you are alim, you are a scholar? So Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he replied by saying, of course, I said I am not ignorant. Because I wanted to show humbleness. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And of course, Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he had helm. Mumineen with education, you should have helm. Tolerance. It is very important. If we have helm on our life, many times people come, they provoke you. If you get provoked by others, of course the life is going to be disaster. Within family members, with wife, with husband, you have to have help. That is the teaching of Ahl Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam. And you remember Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam, one day a person came from Sham and he cursed Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam, and family of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. Imam replied, if you don't have food, I will give you food. If you don't have clothes, I will give you clothes. If you don't have house, I am going to provide you house. The person is cursing. And Imam is showing humbleness, help. This is how it works. So he became from the followers of Imam Hassan al -Islam. The Shami, Sham people of Sham, when they realized that Imam Ali was struck on his head while he was in sajda. So they were very much ignorant. They said, Imam Ali did he used to recite Salats? So this was the question for Shami. So likewise, at the time of Imam Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam, one Christian, he came and insulted Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, Anta Bakar, you are a cow. In Arabic language, when you say Bakar, it is, means kafir, cow. Baqir means the splitter of knowledge, of course. So Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, when he insulted, he said, Bakar, Imam replied, I am not Bakar, I am Baqir. Then he said, your mother is so and so, and he said, according to some narrations, he said, your mother was chef. Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, of course, if someone takes name of your mother in bad manners. So Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, again he smiled and said, if, my, if, if, 
according to your opinion, if my mother, she was chef, of course being chef is skills, one of her skills. So there is not, there is no harm having such skills and being chef. And then again he accused mother of Imam Baqir alayhi salatu wasalam. Then Imam replied by saying, if it is the reality what you are saying about my mother, so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive my mother. And you know the mother of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, Fatima bintul Hassan, granddaughter of Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wasalam. So Imam said, if you are truthful person, whatever you are saying is truth, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I ask Allah to forgive my mother. If you are liar, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. When he saw such humbleness, Imam is, he is cursing, accusing the mother of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, and when he realized that in return, Imam is doing istighfar for me. Imam, what he did say? He said, if you are a liar, then I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. So Imam is asking for forgiveness for the person who is cursing, accusing the mother of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. So when he realized such helm, saw such helm from Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, I become, I leave my religion, I become Muslim and follower of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So he left Christianity and became Muslim just because of humbleness. That's why, according to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لَوْ كُنْتَ فَضَّنْ غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكِ If you were angry man, of course, people around you will leave you. So we have to be very much humble, especially within this country, when we are spreading the knowledge of Ahibad alayhi wa sallam. So when Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam, as I have said, 19 years he spread a hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So we have to learn the hadith of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam. In the end, I want to bring some, some of his narration. So inshallah, within our times, we are going to be narrators of a hadith of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam. Inshallah, salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah, 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 Allah. In different subjects, there are different subjects, there are different hadiths of Imam Ali Salatu Salam. When it comes to the morals, Imam Al-Waqir, he says, Tabasumur Rajulay fi wajhe akhihe hasana. When you see each other, you have to smile. Because when you smile for each other, that is hasana and good deeds. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So always we should smile for each other. This, these are the morals. When it comes to the perfection, all of us we want perfection in our life. Imam Ali Salatu Wasman he says, Al Kamal Kullu Al Kamal. The complete perfection is what? At Tafakku Fiddin. Being jurist in your religion. This is perfection. Complete perfection. Was Sabro Al Naiba. And having patience whenever you face calamities in your life. Wa Tagdeerul Ma'isha. And spending whatever wealth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to you in measure. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allah, Allah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And when it comes to the knowledge, Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, Rahim Allahu abdan ahyal ilm. Those who make education to be alive, mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon the such person. So we have to make education of every kind of education, especially education of Islam to be alive in our time. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. That's why there are a lot of darajah for alim. He says, Imam Waqir again, he says, Alimun yuntafu bi ilmi afdal min sabirina alfa abid. The alim from whose knowledge people benefit, he is afdal than 70,000 abidin. 70,000 Abidin. That's why it is highly, highly appreciated to gain the knowledge of Islam and whatever knowledge in is important in our time. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And after gaining knowledge, of course, we have to act according to our knowledge, especially when it comes to the knowledge of Islam. Imam Waqi says, Man amila bima ya'alam. Those who do act according to their knowledge, Man amila bima ya'alam, allahu ma la ma 
lam ya'lam so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach them what knowledge they don't have salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad Allah and finally we, all of us we are Shia of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wassalam inshallah we are followers of Imam alayhi salatu wassalam but Imam again as every Imam Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wassalam also he gave signs of Shia he says fa wallahi ma shi'atuna illa man ittaqa wa ata'a illa man ittaqa Allah wa ata'a fa wallahi i swear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma shi'atuna there is no what is from our Shia except those illa man ittaqallah who secure themselves from sinning have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ata'ahu and they are obedient servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad likewise in another narration he says la tanalo vilayatuna or shafa'atuna illa bil amale wal wara if you want to have intercession of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam on the day of judgment, so you have to be in two categories. Illa bil amale, we have to have good deeds. Wal wara, we have to refrain ourselves from all kind of forbidden acts. With this we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us strength and tawfiq to gain the knowledge of Imam Bakr alayhi salatu wasalam. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and our marhameen. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill all of our hajat. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for reappearance of Imam Mahdi alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.